Ultra Bandness 1 slash Growing Nemesis Chrono Concert Extravaganza Part 2 X Zero Preview. <clears throat> Okay, it's cold in this room, so I'm wearing Mecha Raccoon for now, anyway. Or at least I got his body on and his feet, but I'm not gonna use his head or his body. Or this guy. Okay, um, this concert. The first two albums featured are more on the conflict between Growing Nemesis, well, Ultra Bandits 1 and The Empire of Pride. Well, more precisely, The Grudge Against Theory and Back in the Air Temple. Hello, Noodle. I know, you like the story, don't you? But, the story didn't last too much longer after their fifth album because things changed. Empire of Fright recorded an album uh, specifically for the kids trying to end the and become one of the biggest and best feature albums ever recorded, musically anyway. And it did have two songs of the year, but that's for a different time when I get into the Empire Crew concert about April or somewhere around. Long there. Come on, Noodle. I love you, but you make a mess out of my stage. Get back here and scratch on this thing. Thank you. Uh, so, um, what were Ultra Bandits going to do without a rival group? And no space events to take off? Well, things really took a strange <clears throat> change for the better with them when the Crowlin Force started showing up. Yeah. They have had encounters with the Crown Force before, but that was way back when I was just starting the Space of this series and didn't really think too much about the enemies of the Super Game series. Come on, Noodle. Get back here. Get me a little time. Or you don't knock the characters every which way. Anyway, uh, the crowd force is pretty much all the enemy crafts from all the classic games. But we decided to limit the crowd force to just what the space events team had uh, crafts to take on. In other words, they couldn't do pull a fast one and use the enemy bugs from the end because we'll have the the end spacecraft on our team. Uh, they couldn't attack uh, team three with any of the enemies from the fender because that's something that was used in the first game. That's the third one. And so forth. So, uh, anyway, the way I had uh, a large tube plan 
plans for the town for to uh, take control of that planet. Uh, Space Defense 2.3 would have to go in there and try to save them. There was a little subplot in which uh, Buffy's daughter was kidnapped and held hostage on Mars. But there was a big problem. Some of Space Defense 2.3 was going to take a wrong turn and be stuck in one of the toughest parts of the Solaris game. That's where feeling, well, Ultra Bandis came in. We did for Cav for solve the event and hid somewhere within the Solaris galaxy to help Space Defense 2.3 out, jump through that, help them free the planet, and all as well. But at the same time, it seemed like the town force wanted to let them know, hey, if there's no Space Defense team around, they're going to be causing massive mischief. So, thank you, Noodle. I really love it when you mess up my audience and save and stuff. Oh well. Anyway. Most of the original Space Events team can be hired in uh, Space Flyer 1.1. Mainly me, as you saw in the next concert. Rather stick to being part of Nick than having a space event. So, who better to lead space events 1.5 than Ultra Advantage? Or they had to change her name to be taken seriously, which became Family Manager. But that didn't happen until the sixth album. And I can't wait until I get to it. I know this has been a little bit longer of a review, but some details can't really wait until I come to the album without a little bit of explanation. So, now I think I'm ready for uh, part two, X-Men. See you there.